tonight, military might taking over prisons in Honduras in a strategy called Operation Faith and Hope after a riot ended in a deadly massacre. Videos posted to social media by the Honduran Armed Forces show soldiers and military vehicles arriving in force. While unsettling images show prisoners sitting on the ground, lined up one after the other and barely clothed. Prison cells tossed and turned upside down in the search for drugs and weapons. Cumpliendo la, la orden emitida por la señora presidenta, hemos iniciado el proceso de transición de los centros penales de la Policía Nacional hacia la Policía Militar. Authorities saying the inspections turning up everything from grenades and ammunition to machetes, cell phones and charging cables. The mandate coming in the wake of a violent and deadly riot at a women's detention center just outside the nation's capital at the hands of the Barrio 18 gang, leaving 46 dead. The bloody massacre playing out as guards were overtaken by inmates, victims hacked with machetes, locked in jail cells and set on fire. Right now, the government is feeling overwhelmed and the reaction is very strong because they need to put on the ground uh, uh, like a statement that we are in control here. The brutality prompting President Xiomara Castro to call for, quote, drastic measures implementing military control over 21 prisons for at least a year while training 2,000 new guards. Todo esto se están utilizando técnicas y tácticas militares. Todo esto de, de manera sorpresiva, de, con inmediatez. The no-tolerance tactics, similar to neighboring El Salvador, under the direction of President Nayib Bukele, one of Latin America's most popular leaders. But the crackdown raising concerns over possible human rights violations. Most people think, okay, they are criminals, okay, but they are people. So they are still part of a state that needs to guarantee rights for everyone. The move by President Castro could be interpreted as one of desperation to bring about both peace and political approval. Using something that she knows that is working in El Salvador can be a very political calculated measures. Valerie Castro joins us now from our top story studios at 30 Rock. Valerie, as you point out in your report, you know, we've covered on this broadcast many times the mass incarceration problems El Salvador has faced. And this is not the first time Honduras is dealing with this as well. Tom, some critics are calling for the president to also address the crumbling infrastructure and chronically overcrowded prison conditions. A U.N. report says prisons in the country are more than 32 percent over capacity. The prison complex where that deadly riot took place, it houses more than 4,000 people. But Tom, it is only meant for 2,500. All right, Valerie Castro for us tonight from New York. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.